On June 22nd, Ron Howard was announced as the replacement director for the Han Solo Star Wars anthology movie. Two days prior, on the evening of June 20th, Star Wars fandom worldwide was rocked to the core by the surprise announcement from Lucasfilm that directors Phil Lord and Chris Miller would leave the Han Solo movie, citing the usual catch-all excuse of creative differences. Of course, directors come and go from different productions all the time, but usually prior to cameras ever rolling. What makes this special is that the movie has been filming since February and reportedly only had three weeks left of filming before being complete. Shortly afterwards, Variety broke the scoop that rather than the director duo leaving, as the press release had implied, they had in fact been fired by Kathleen Kennedy. In this editorial, I'll first talk about how Lucasfilm and Disney have controlled the publicity surrounding this event, before moving on to why Lord and Miller were fired. Then I'll talk about the importance of pairing the right director with the right project, and how producer Kathleen Kennedy, who is the Kevin Feige of Star Wars for those of you who might not know, in my opinion has a spotty track record in this matter. Before we move on to the actual firing and replacement hiring, let's look at when and how the story has been revealed, because this is expert handling of what would otherwise be an unmitigated publicity disaster. Usually, both in Hollywood and in the world of business at large, bad news like these are dropped on a Friday afternoon, after markets close to prevent too big a hit on share prices, and newsrooms are less staffed for the weekend. That way, everyone gets time to adjust before markets reopen, hoping the fallout won't be too bad. In this case, however, marketing and public relations powerhouse Disney and their Lucasfilm outlet have taken control of the story every step of the way. To begin with, it was Lucasfilm themselves that announced that Lord and Miller would be leaving the production by implication of their own free will, all while praising their talent as filmmakers. This was a typical press release approved by legal and cleared with both parties' representatives and dropped on a Tuesday evening. But then, almost instantly afterwards, exclusive scoops of what really went down started appearing in the major Hollywood publications, and these are what got all the attention. Do note that these aren't official statements from Disney or Lucasfilm, but nameless insiders leaking what went down behind the scenes. Ron Howard was name-dropped immediately, and Lord and Miller were put in an ever less flattering light for each passing new scoop and variety on The Hollywood Reporter. Since these are anonymous leaks, Disney and Lucasfilm have deniability, but do not doubt for a second that the majority of these leaks are orchestrated directly from their offices. I am not saying that the information revealed is wrong, far from it, it would backfire badly if it was. But by doing it this way, they control the narrative put out there, and without opening themselves to lawsuits for revealing confidential information in the process. Come Wednesday morning, the pundits and opinionators aren't talking about how Lord and Miller left a sinking ship where nothing works, but how they went off script and forced Lucasfilm into taking the action they are now doing. Likewise, Fans get time to absorb the idea of Ron Howard taking over, and all the news outlets will feed you, the fans, arguments of why Howard is the right pick. Arguments that in turn were fed to them by Lucasfilm offices, however off the record. On Thursday, Ron Howard was announced, and everyone can breathe a sigh of relief. You can rest assured that he was already on board before any of this ever got out though. And then on Friday, the overall direction of the narrative making the rounds is that this was all for the better. There will still be murmurs and doubt, and criticism leveled at Disney and Lucasfilm, but what they did here was take an explosive situation that would blow up in their face and turn it into a controlled fire they could extinguish, all inside of one week. With that covered, let's move on to the narrative that has made the rounds itself. According to the leaks, Lord and Miller clashed with not just producer Kathleen Kennedy, but also with Lawrence Kastan, Star Wars writer since The Empire Strikes Back. Kennedy and Kastan have their own way of doing things and run a tight ship. Lord and Miller were taken aback by this, because they are also used to doing things their way. They are accustomed to creative freedom, and on this project, they didn't have it. 
While Lord and Miller were supposedly hired for their vision and distinctive brand of filmmaking, Kennedy did not approve of their shooting style and process of interacting with actors and crew, while Castan objected to them encouraging improvisation, which caused the movie to deviate from the script. Furthermore, the chemistry between the directors and Kennedy was never right, one leak saying that Kennedy didn't even like the way they folded their socks. That's a nice way of saying that initial annoyance grew to borderline hatred as time went on. It is not too hard to guess why they would have clashed over the direction taken and creative choices made. Lord and Miller together make up a creative powerhouse, who excel in adding a clever subtext to something mundane, pop culture references, and laugh out loud funny stuff. All great qualities in filmmakers, but none of which are the first thing that spring to mind as needed for the canon Star Wars universe. By all accounts, the movie they were making became less and less like the heist or western type movie Kathleen Kennedy wanted, and more and more like the kind of comedy Lord and Miller excel at. To make matters worse, they seemingly had no intention of playing ball and making the movie more Star Warsy in reshoots. That is allegedly what got them fired, and their contributions to the movie will now be minimized. The scoops say it is unclear if and how Lord and Miller will be credited on the movie, and that an additional several weeks of reshoots have been planned for this summer, helmed by Ron Howard. Since there is even talk about Lord and Miller's director credit being removed, those several weeks of reshoots actually mean close to two months or more, essentially remaking the movie. That is an extreme measure, one that will add multiple tens of millions to the budget and it could even delay the release. But it does not mean that the movie is doomed. While it is rare, and the exception rather than the rule, passable and even great movies can still come out of troubled productions. To summarize, what happened with Han Solo was that Kathleen Kennedy and Lawrence Kastan were making one movie, while Lord and Miller were making another. There is probably plenty of blame to go around for that, but the one ultimately responsible is in my opinion Kathleen Kennedy. Not for firing Lord and Miller now, but for failing to fire them before production ever started. For a movie to be good, the director shouldn't just agree with the producer of what movie to make, which is kind of basic. On top of that, the director should have sensibilities and a particular talent for making the most important aspects of any given movie come to life. Using Marvel Studios, the other Disney outlet as an example, Joss Whedon was right for the Avengers because he excels at character interactions and character relations. James Gunn was right for Guardians of the Galaxy because he excels at characters with personal issues, baggage and family dynamics. Apart from the occasional miss, Marvel has had massive success by giving underused or up-and-coming directors a shot at making their movies, and the reason for that success is that they've paired directors with projects that play to their particular strengths. Kathleen Kennedy seems to have adopted the approach of hiring up-and-coming directors for Star Wars, which is admirable, but without picking them for their particular sensibilities. No good can come of that. I was not a fan of Rogue One, for the simple reason that outside of Darth Vader and that one robot, not a single one of the characters were compelling. That should come as no surprise, because both Godzilla and Monsters demonstrated that director Gareth Edwards is best at monsters, while his chosen human leads might as well have been cardboard cutouts. Why Kennedy chose him for Rogue One is almost as big a mystery to me as what the hell she was thinking when she hired Lord and Miller for Han Solo. I mean, what did she think was going to happen? The movie she described that she wanted, a western or heist-like thing, couldn't be further away from what Lord and Miller specializes in. Creative powerhouses like them, and Tarantino, and others, have no business being hired to make movies that are just one piece of a larger interlocking puzzle. It is a shame for all involved that things ever progressed to this point. About the replacement director, Ron Howard, forget about his previous ties to George Lucas and him having been in the running for past Star Wars projects. This alone does not make him suitable for the job, but Ron Howard excels at biopics, a slower pace, and more atmospheric storytelling, and this is what makes him the right choice for the kind of Han Solo movie they have in mind here. He, or someone like him, is probably what they should have gone for from day one. 
I do believe he is a better fit for both the Star Wars universe and Han Solo than Lord and Miller ever was. Ron Howard and Disney pouring in millions can salvage this, but there still remains one big question. Do we really need a Han Solo anthology movie, one which does not star Harrison Ford? I am all in favor of the idea of anthology movies and exploring different aspects of the Star Wars universe. Possibilities are endless. I'm all for Boba Fett, and I would be all for Plagueis and young Palpatine, a young Darth Vader coming to terms with his new ill-fitting subpar body prosthesis and iron lung, and especially ancient Jedi and Sith Wars. But after CGI augmented doubles of Tarkin and Leia, I am not excited about recast Han Solo. Not only because I am reluctant about anyone but Harrison Ford in the role, but because I am against anything that might serve to demystify the character. A Han Solo type has become a description of a certain archetype, and I really don't want to see that most vital aspect of the character messed with. And I am saying that as an at best casual fan of the brand. Let me know your thoughts on all of this in the comments. If you like this video, then please hit that subscribe button. Due to recent changes made by YouTube, we also encourage all of our subscribers, both new and old, to please hit that bell icon next to the subscribe button as well, so you will be notified when new videos are uploaded. Be sure to check back for news and analysis of the happenings and corporate politics behind the scenes of your favorite genre movies, as well as explorations of your favorite characters and their backgrounds and context here at Midnight's Edge.